build your business for yourself and your business. Now, I, I just want to start by congratulating you all. You've broken the 9 to 5. You've broken the ritual of go to work, do the time, relax. Because we are here to better ourselves. So, before I start, I just want you to all have a little clap and a certain presentation. So before I start, just got a few announcements. So just to turn off mobile phones. Any questions? Just we, we've got scheduled periods for questions. So I'd just like to say at the end, that'll be great. Less an emergency. Try and remain seated. Obviously, we don't want don't want to walk across someone and stop them from from seeing the presentation today, okay? We're also recording and streaming live. I'm sure many people are, are, are tuned in, tuned in today or just getting tuned in now. But the most important fact is just to relax and enjoy it. Seems to be a stigma when it comes to business that it's boring, it's dull. It doesn't have to be. We're here to have fun, we're here to open our minds, we're here to better ourselves, and that's what it's all about. So, before I start, I just want to, to hear a little bit about what the room does. Um, so, what, what's your name? My name's Tom. Tom, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, I'm currently a performer and a teacher, um, and I just want to learn how to how to you know, franchise myself more um, and try and, try and better myself in my profession. So what, what's your, what's your, your clientele? Is it um, more, more aimed towards children or, means, or towards taking people to that extra step and that professional step? Well I do, I do both. I, um, I do a lot. I teach all age ranges so I teach kind of um, from around about five to seven year olds to 18 to 22 year olds. So, um, you know, it, it's, it, it's continuing to work with different age ranges, I suppose, to, to expand my, myself and my business to different age ranges and, and to focus on different things. So as well as performing, maybe offering something else as well as that. Definitely come back. So what's your name? My name is Daniel, Daniel Bell. Daniel, um, so tell me a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I'm a, uh, I'm a motivational speaker, I'm an entrepreneur, and I've got a personal development company. And uh, so this today is going to really benefit me because obviously, I would say, as, uh, as, Tom, as Tom said, I'm looking to build an image for my business. I'm also um, patenting product at the moment, which is uh, very exclusive to me at the moment, so it's top secret. Um, so I'm preparing for that. So today is going to help me, and um, so um, so yeah, that's, that's a bit. I'll, I'll also mentor people as well. So I want to mentor people about motivation and how to uh, how to how to keep people, uh, how to maximise people's productivity, how to stay motivated, and how to um, how to reprogram somebody's mind for success to to set them up for that. So. Yeah. 
Turn all fired up then, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, that's poor. Are we all fired up? Yeah. yeah. That's a bit better. So, who am I? Why am I here? So, my story. I'm 24 years old. Been doing this a couple of months. In their months already. I worked with the Prince's Trust. We've done business plans, worked together. Worked with former professional footballers. Former premiership footballers. And you think, why do they need your help? Why do they need my help? Why? Well, a lot of them don't know much about finance. A lot of them haven't been taught about business. They have a career, but their career is only, at best, 15 years. By the age of 35, in which many people are settling down into a career, their career is over. And the money which they've lived on, they become comfortable with. So then to, to build after, they struggle. Now, a lot of people don't understand that when, when they look at premiership footballers. They look at professional footballers and go, I want to be a professional footballer, look at the money they want. However, there's, there's a lot behind it. And this is what I, I want to build in today. This is what I br br want to bring together. We're all a network, we're all individuals. In this world, we are either somebody or nobody. And today, we are the improvement of yesterday. But tomorrow, we are going to be the improvement of today. Okay? I'm also mentored by a multi-millionaire. The highest, youngest paid internet sen sensation in the world. I'm a professional speaker. I enjoy this. It's, it, it's what I like to do. I stand up in front of people and portray stories, whether it's a story, or fitness, or coaching, whatever it is. I, I enjoy this. I get a little buzz from it. And why do I do that? Well, I used to play some professional football. I play football quite a high level. And then what happens is injuries happen. Life happens. There's events we don't plan for. There's events which come along and they alter things. Now, I'm going to say, I was in my comfort zone. I didn't want to break that comfort zone. I thought, oh, it's been great so far. I'm 17, 18 years old, I play some professional football. The clubs I'm going to keeps going up, the money keeps going up. No. What? Life's easy. Life's easy. Then boom, it happened. Got injured. What do you do? Oh, I'm injured, I'll be, I'll be out for 12 months, 18 months. I thought, ah, oh, they're, they're fine with that. They will be fine with that. Injuries happen. Injuries is part and parcel of sport. It wasn't that easy though. It wasn't that easy. No, no, I'll be out for 12 to 18 months. They're taking the chance of, it's a long-term injury. They looked at it as, well, you're 17, 18 years old got potential, now you're not going to be able to grow for 12 to 18 months. And when you get back, it's going to take you months to get back to the level you're at today. Do they want that? No. They cut ties. They cut the ties because they're good. Now suddenly I've gone from my comfort zone of being able to kind of cruise through life, have, have the sport, have everything together, to now being unemployed, no, no sport, no club to being out of my comfort zone as a 17, 18 year old. And I was like, okay, this happened. You know, 18 months down the line, I'll be back. In reality, a long term injury, rehabilitation takes a long time. In reality, I wasn't back then for four years. 
By that time, I was 22 years old. Would any semi-professional club look at a 22-year-old with a record of an injury for four years? Absolutely not. So what do I do? Look at alternative ways. I'm not going to lie, I did what every 17, 18-year-old would do in that situation. Forget about it. Drink it away. Drink it away. Saturday, Sunday comes great. Let's go out on the piss with the lads. You know, we, we don't face them issues. We'll put them behind. We'll have a drink. It, it'll be fine. Come Monday, come Monday, we've got five days and it's a weekend again and, and we can go out and enjoy it again. But as you can imagine, how long can you live like that? Not that long. So what have I done? I looked at alternative ways. I looked at university. I, I took on a sports therapy degree. So hang on, if I'm not playing injuries, I can help people from other situations. But there's still that void. I miss the action. I miss the action. There is nothing which comes close to being at that level and having that action. But this does. You stand on stage and a lot of people come to me and go, Tom, I've got a speaking gig and I'm struggling, I'm a bit nervous, it's my first one. What do I do? You know, I'm really nervous. Superb. That's the way you should feel. And when you're up there, just feel natural. I'm going to tell you a secret as well about professional speaking. If you see anybody speak, you see them over and over again, they'll open and end with the same lines. Why? Comfort zone. It settles them down for them to then build later on. So what did I do? Did I know this? No, not at all. I went out and learned. I got mentors. Now, I started in network marketing. That's where my business career started. This is what led me to where I am today, network marketing. Now, network marketing has a lot of stigma attached to it. Oh, it's a pyramid scheme, it's this, it's that. The reality is, it's the future. And if you don't appreciate that, then you're going backwards. You've got to look at the careers people are going into now. It's a different way of doing things. It's marketing a different way. You've got to appreciate things when they come. Network marketing has come and risen the past five years for a reason. I acknowledged that and went, I like, I, I like the idea, I'm going to jump on board. Now, there is still a little gap there. Still a little gap. So, what would I do about that? I went to the Prince's Trust, spoke to them. I was like, I really want to sell the business. I'm not really sure what, but I don't really want to work for somebody. I like the buzz of, you know, having my future in my hands. I like that idea. What did I do? I contacted my mentor. Now, it doesn't have to be phone call or anything formal. In fact, we got, we got talking on Facebook. Asked him some simple questions and I built from that. All it has to be. And from there, email a couple of professional speakers, David Heiner and Paul McGee. I'm talking to them. How do they do it? I want to learn from you. You're at this level, I'm not at this level. I want to get to your level. So I contact with them. Mm -hmm. And built from there. And now what do I specialise in? I specialise in time management. Specialising in time management and building up that perception, building that image. And that's what I'm trying to teach you today. Today's going to be a little insight into what I do. It'll be almost like a workshop. So, let's get on with the next slide. So, just want you to shout out. What are the key attributes needed in business? 
Charisma. Charisma. Do you need charisma in business? Yes, maybe. We say Donald Trump is the most charismatic man in the world. Probably not. Leadership. Leadership. Superb. You can't have a good business without having a good leader at the top. Passion. Passion. Exactly. Exactly. In fact, we'll come on to that point in a little while. Tommy, if you remind me of that point, we'll come back to passion. What else do we need? Teamwork. Teamwork. Superb. Are you going to do it all yourself? No, you're not. What else do we need? Structure. Structure. Yeah, Systemisation of business. Of the system. A system, yes. Yeah, superb. It's definitely what we need. Is there anything else? Goals. Goals, yes. Are they going to be smart goals? Are they going to be realistic goals? Or are we going to have dreams as well? Both. Yeah, both. Superb. Now, there's one point we're missing here. There's a one key attribute, which I say is important in business. And it begins with G. Anybody tell me what it is? Second word's R. Growth. Growth. Superb. Because if you don't have growth, you're not going to be successful. And after all, isn't that what we want? Now this brings me on to my next point. How do you be successful as a person? So, just want to shout out some ideas again. What do we need to be success to be a successful individual? Drive. Drive. Superb. Anyone else? What do we need to be successful? Let's take away personal all the way. What do we need to be successful? No. If, so. Commitment. Is that good? Is that good? What else do we need? Balance. Balance. Life and you know work and family, still having relationships, friends, family, having Yeah, superb. And you know what? It's quite funny because they put key attributes for business. They're old enough, easy. Say key attributes, personal. You personally, the key attributes. It's hard, isn't it? In fact, it's really different. Don't want growth. Don't want to grow. Want to want to want to be a better me tomorrow. Yes, exactly. Of course I do. And do we need leadership to be? To be successful personally? Of course we do. And I gave back, I did this in two stages. I did this in business and personal for a reason. Because the attributes what we need to be successful as a business and as a person, it's the same, isn't it? Yeah. It's the same. Now, why are we questioning this? Why are we struggling on personal level? Because if we want to be successful, we just do what we want to do as a business. Because we are all brands, aren't we? We're all representing ourselves. And we'll come back to that point. So, brands. If I say, I'm loving it, who's that? McDonald's. McDonald's, exactly. Just do it? No. No? Finger licking good. Yeah, Beans means height. The best the bank can get. Chill out. Chill out. You're worth it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Exactly. And these are little catchphrases which we're picking up. We know these. They're brands, they're slogans. Why? So they've probably got a good PR agent in there. Now 
want to tell you a story about the Kit Kat. Now, uh, what, what do you associate Kit Kat with? What's Kit Kat slogan? Take a break, have a Kit Kat. Now, Kit Kat is very successful today. Kit Kat has been around for years. But did you know the Kit Kat brand? They were going to get rid of it. They had to rebrand it. They didn't know what to do with Kit Kat. Until someone came up with a slogan have a break, have a Kit Kat. Now, you think, every time I have a coffee, how many people joke about, oh, having a break, are we? Oh, do you want a Kit Kat? It's everywhere. And it's in our mind. If we have a break, oh, I'm just off for a break. You're still thinking, ah, oh, Kit Kat. And you know what? Their sales drastically improved through that slogan. Because it would associate in the mind. Would associate. Have a break, have a cup, cup, of, cup of coffee in the morning, and go have a Kit Kat. So, just going to move on to the next task. Which company from this list, we've got Aldi, Tesco, Morrison's, Sainsbury's, Waitrose and, and Whole Foods. Which would you say is the cheapest one there? If you're buying milk, out of these companies, which, which one would you say is the cheapest? Aldi? Okay. And which one would you say is the most expensive? Whole Foods. Superb. So taking on, on that, so we're going with the cheapest as Aldi and the most expensive as Whole Foods. Who has the best quality of food? If you're buying, if you want fresh fish, which one of them would you go to? Which one do you think will sell the best quality? Whole Foods. Would you argue Whole Foods is the most expensive? Yes. But is the quality going to be better than Aldi? Who knows? Chances are there's not going to be much difference. But let's say I buy 250 grams of fresh Alaskan salmon from Aldi. £3. I buy the same from Whole Foods. £6. But which one would we, would we, would we buy? Would you go for the LD at £3 or would you go for the Whole Foods at £6? Any answers? Go LD. Seems good. Seems good. Fairly careful that way. You'd go in the middle, wouldn't you? But not many people will go... But, but let's say you take LD away. And next minute it's your corner shop. Do we associate a little corner shop with high quality? No, not at all. And it's all about perception. I go back to a Lacoste t-shirt. Now, Lacoste is obviously a brand. But that t-shirt in Primark, how much? But that plain t-shirt in, in Primark. Five. Yeah. Five pounds, five pounds. I, I'm probably thinking it would be cheaper than that. Three quid. Now, you can take the same t-shirt, put the cost logo on it. How much? 15, 20, at least. Yeah, at least 15, 20 at least. But which one are we buying? If we want to go out on town on the Friday, Saturday night, what are we buying? The Primark one for £5? Or are we buying the, the, the cost one at £15? No, I don't know why. <laughs> 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 It is, it is. But why can they charge that amount? Now, I go back to Tesco. Has anyone noticed in Tesco, the meat section? That it has a different, different meat? Yeah. I mean, it, you may be getting a better quality of meat. But if you look at the back, it has a farm number on it. Has anyone noticed that it's the same farm number from the everyday value? 
to Tesco exclusive. Does anyone else notice that? What do we associate with the better quality? Tesco every day? Or Tesco expensive exclusive range? We go with the exclusive range. And which one will we say tastes better? The exclusive range. And it probably does. Because we're making, making a mind connection straight away. We don't only absorb stuff by taste through our senses, we have look as well, our perception. Now, it's like that Lacoste t shirt. It's the same quality as, as a Primark one at £3. But we go, oh, Lacoste, look at this. The quality feels a lot better, doesn't it? Is it? No. It's that mind body connection. So I'm going to move on to my next point. So why can they charge so much? Why can they charge so much? So I'll ask the audience today, why can they charge so much? Reputation. Reputation. Is that true? Is it glass half full? Or glass half empty? It's their perception. They've been able to build that brand up so much that people will pay it. People will pay it happily. Because they make that connection of, hang on, I'm going to get better, better products. I'm going to get better services. Will they? Who knows? It's like Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is a brand. People will rather pay for Coca-Cola and Tesco's own. Why? It's that perception, isn't it? It's that perception that what you're buying is going to be better. And how have they done that? Well, that's a point we'll move on to next. So they have contacted larger companies. Let's say you're a small business today. We've got a couple of small businesses here, and we've got a couple of large businesses in the room today. Now, would you agree as a small business, you're free to contact a big business? So let's say you're a shoemaker, you're a sports shoe wear, called sportsshoes.com, okay? Now, you want to be competing with Adidas, Nike, people at the top. How do you work with the people from the top? Well, at the minute, at the minute, Tom, I'm not, I'm not big enough. I've, I've got to build my brand, I've got to build my image. Right, okay. So, five years down the line, when you think you're big enough, you're going to contact Nike, aren't you? You're going to contact Nike, are you Yes, I'll contact them at that time. Okay, no problem. Contact them at that time. And do you know what normally comes back? Nine out of ten times. No, your brand's not big enough. We don't see this. We, we, we don't see it. If you come back in a couple of years, maybe we can do business. But your business needs to grow. Now, if sportshoes.com, would you argue if they contacted them from day one and went, look, we want to reach the heights of your company. We want to be able to work alongside you. They did that from day one. They got a no back, they got a flat out rejection. Two years down the line, sportshoes.com, back to nine. Look, we took away a few of your points, we've built that brand again, you know, we've, we've improved our image. Again, Nike. No, not this time. So again, they go back to the drawing board. They make that contact. Three years down the line, they contact Nike again. Nike again says no, but well, they're starting to see the growth. Now, another brand comes along to Nike. A moderate brand, a brand which is, on the, which is on the side. They go, really want someone that can make shoes at a decent price, at good quality. But we can't afford to pay the prices of you. We can't afford to, to work. Do you know anyone? Oh, actually, yes I do. I've had this company who have kept, kept talking to me. And actually, I'm seeing their growth. It's called sportsshoes.com. 
straight away they've done business. Why? Because you can see that growth. You can see the growth from day one. Now if that company just went once to Nike, they went once to Nike at that point they thought they were big enough, and that just went Nike. Do you think they would have got that contract? Would they got that contract with a medium company? No, of course they wouldn't. Of course they wouldn't at all. And again, another three years down the line, they went back to Nike. I went, you know what? You're growing at such a rate. We've got to do business. We've got to do business. Because if you carry on, carry on growing at this rate, I'm going to stand here and I'm going to be the richest man in the world. We're going to do business straight away. Yes, your business isn't there by now, but I've seen the growth. And if you carry that on, we're going to keep growing. We're going to go from millions to multi-millions to billions to multi-billions and so on. And why? Because they made that contact from day one. From day one they made that contact. They contacted that company. They were able to see that brand. So what else did they do? They kept producing, they kept promoting, they grinded daily. How many people failed at the first hurdle? Now, it's a stat in the UK that 95% of businesses fail in their first year. 95% fail in their first year. Let's take that in a minute, 95% fail. Why? They get to the first hurdle. They stop. Now, would you say businesses are there to make profit in the first year? What's the first year there for? To make profit? No. It's to network, to grow, to build that brand. Now, what people do, again, I believe this, business and individuals relate so much. Relate so, so much. Now, go back to the point, what, when you're facing that first hurdle, what do people do? Someone turns up to Daniel, if, if someone turns up to you, no you can't do it Daniel, what are you going to do? Watch me. Watch me. Exactly. Well yeah. You're going to prove them wrong, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, well it's mo most of the time you go, like, oh, you know, just, <laughs> most of the honestly just give up, do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. people just give up, because obviously it's disheartening, but. Yeah. Yeah. And do you know what? My parents, when I started this, they went, Tom, this is never going to work. This is never going to work. Why, why are you wasting your time? You're deluded. This isn't going to work. I kept working. I didn't tell them I was working. But I kept working. I kept producing. And do you know what they, they said? It was, only, it was only a couple of months ago. Month, months ago. They went, Oh, Tom, we always had faith that you would do it. That took me back. That isn't the same story you said two years ago when you're saying, you're deluded. Why are you doing this? It's all about building. It's all about producing and promoting, grinding. Because all these challenges you face are, no, you can't do it. It's just a hurdle to get past. Now, if success was that easy, I'll be out, out of a job. I will be needed. I will not be needed. And we'd all be successful. We'd all be laughing our way to the bank. Our company, our, our country wouldn't be in a recession. Yes, we've got out of the recession. But interest rates in the UK top out at about one and a half percent. Now that's at the top. That's at the top. One and a half percent. Two years ago, we we're doubling that. Some banks are even offering five percent interest. So success isn't easy. But what do we do? We keep going. We keep grinding. It's as if you're an international herder. We 
get to that first hurdle? Jump over it. Second one, jump over it. Hang on, there's a bit of a lead there. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to lengthen my stride. Third one, you trip over. Now, you've gone from first to third. Are you just going to give up? Or are you going to go to that next hurdle? And jump that next hurdle. To world championships. I'm not going to just give up. If I get a bronze, I'm getting a bronze for my country, I'm getting a bronze for myself. I put all this hard work in to get to the pinnacle of my career. I'm not just going to give up. I'm going to keep grinding. And this is what the large companies did. What did they also do? They went out, they networked. They built that relationship. They would go for business to breakfast. They would go to these meetings. Wherever they went, they would talk about it. They'd carry business cards with them. They'd go to Tesco, they'd buy a pint of milk and went, oh, do you know what you should do? Get a Coca Cola. Coca Cola would be really refreshing on a nice warm day like today. Here, take my business card. We can do business in the future. And do you know what? You sell quite a lot of Coca Cola bottles as well in this group. You know, in this little shop, I like this shop. It's a really nice little shop. You should sell. You should sell my brand. They networked. They built the way up. And let's be honest, we don't know everything. As a business, we think we, we should know everything. We think we should know people and do this, do that, know about my finances. It's not about that. It's about knowing somebody that does. A networking problem. Let's be honest. Let's take Virgin today. Well, Richard Branson dropped out of school before his GCSEs. Do you think he had any idea at that point to be where he is today? He may have had an inkling. Do you think he, he had enough knowledge at that point to, to be where he is today? No, not at all. But he's there. He's there. And he networked his way to the top. He contacted business people and went, how are you successful? Now, Mark Zuckerberg. We know Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook. Who was Mark Zuckerberg mentor for? Steve Jobs. Mark Zuckerberg didn't do it on his own. He had help along the way from someone who was already there. So what can we do as a business? Build up. You learn from somebody that's, all, that's already there. You learn from someone that's above you. Once you get to that stage, you jump mm -hmm. above. Mm -hmm. You go again. Now, I go back to Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, obviously the very successful in Apple. But a lot of people forget that Steve Jobs got sacked by Apple. What did see Steve Jobs do? Did he go, oh, I made enough money now? It doesn't matter. No, he didn't. Steve Jobs went, this is the best thing that could have happened. And do you know why? Because I stopped growing. I stood still. I thought, ah. I'll come back to the business and I'll, do, and I'll just carry on where I was before. I'll do what I was already doing. What happened is, everyone else grew past him. And where he thought he was standing still, he wasn't standing still, he was going backwards. So everyone else was moving forwards. And he said, it's the best time, it's the best thing that could have ever happened to him. Because it made him think, Hang on, I've got to keep pressing forward. Got to keep pressing forward. So a couple of years down the line, Apple was the struggling. They approached Steve Jobs again. Steve, can, can, can you come and help us out? You think today, how many people in this room own an Apple product? How many people on the live stream own an Apple product? Or know someone that owns an Apple product? It's all down to Steve Jobs and the fact he kept educated, he kept learning. So, is there anything to take away? We are all brands. It's individuals. We are a brand. We brand ourselves. 
What do you go by? What name do you go by? Go by the nickname you've got? Do we go by a full name? Do we wear a suit? Do we wear slacks? Do we wear pyjamas? Who knows? We're all a brand. At work, we're a brand. We're not only representing the company, we're representing ourselves as well. If you want to get to the next level in that company, represent yourself. You approach that person and go, I want to go further. You put a brand on. Now if you go to work and do no work, sit there all day, kind of laugh at your money, you're a salesman, put your hands in your pocket, and you back and go, customer's going to come to me. It doesn't matter. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're a brand. You represent your own brand. On a night out, do you get into a fight? Do you do this, that, and the other? No, you don't. You're still a brand. Now, I've seen that a couple of times. Some of the people I've worked with, some of the young people I've worked with, they've been on night out, they've got into fights. A couple of years down the line, they go into business, they look to do, it, do business. What happens is, oh no, actually, I don't want to work with you because you were trouble. What happens is probably grew past that. It's grew past that. But that still stands because you're the same person on the night out as the person you're doing business with. Your name doesn't change, your face doesn't change, your personality may change. But you're still the same, you're still your brand, you're still representing your brand. In business, we are a brand. Whatever we do, we are a brand. And we build up that brand. In sport, we are a brand. Now, Errol, you play sport, you play football? Yeah. Tell me a bit about your brand, your, your, your sport, your football, your football. So who are, who are you? Who's, who's Errol Williams, the football? They're playing a hard game where it's like getting lots of lots of ball. Are you picking up a creative player? Or do you want Ever Williams, a tough tackling midfielder? I want a creative player. But I'll tell you what, you're in, you're in a game where you're in the trenches. What do you want? Do you want that creative player? Or do you want Ever Williams, the tough tackling midfielder? Now I'd want Ever Williams, a tough tackling midfielder. This is what we've got to take away. We're all brands. In whatever we do, we are brands. So interviews. A lot of people struggle with interviews. So what I'm going to do now is we did a, did a little, little exercise at the start. We've got Tom and Dan to say a little bit about themselves. I'm going to go back to them now. So Tom, tell me a little bit about yourself. I'm 22. Um, I'm, um, I'm a former and a teacher. Um, I, uh, I enjoy that. It's, it's my profession as well as, uh, as um, something that... that Okay. okay. So tell me, tell me some char characteristics about yourself. Characteristics. Um, I'm very honest. Um, I'm very hardworking. Very punctual. Um, I like to be on time. I like things to be neat and tidy. Um, I like I, I like jobs done properly. Uh, I don't like things being half done. Um, I like passion and commitment. I'm a very committed person. I'm a very loyal person. Great. Dan, tell me about some characteristics of yourself. So my name is Daniel Bauer, I'm an 
entrepreneur, public speaker, and I am a person of integrity. I am a hard worker, and I like to get the best out of people. I like to take somebody and bridge the gap between where they are right now and where they intend to be. I think I've got, I believe I've got leadership qualities. I like to take people and paint the vision and show the way and take people with me. And I love to get the best out of people. I like to help somebody become the best possible version of themselves, which is a true representation of who I represent. Superb, thank you, Dan. And that worked out brilliant. Now, I'm going to offer to the move. Oh, Dan, two there. Which one would you hire? Hands up to go with Tom? Or hands up to go with Dan? If you've got to pick one, which one would you go with? Would you go with Tom? Would you go with Dan? Which one do you think you have a better connection with? Which one would you say painted a better picture? Yes, exactly. It is. That's it. It's true. Which one would you say had a better story? Tom's name, some characteristics. For me, that went, I like, like leadership, you know. Um, I like to paint a picture and take people along that journey. Now, he's painted the story. He's painted the picture. Now, he doesn't have to name the characteristics, though. Because I'm getting them from the story. And you think, how many interviews people go into? Where it's like, Tell me a bit about yourself. And they say these. I like to socialise. I like socialising. Great, we're human beings. <laughs> we have to socialise. <laughs> we have to socialise. Otherwise we'll go mental. Now, I've contacted companies about what they like in interviews. And, uh, and we should couple of them. They went, if they say, I like to socialise, I like socialising, I just rip up the paper, threat in the bin. Yes, why? why? Why why do you do that? Why? Because it shows no charisma. We all like to socialise. We all like to socialise with social creatures. It shows them nothing about their charisma. To me it shows them they've they've written the they they break their CV in five minutes and went, I like to socialise. Why? Because they didn't want to talk about anything else. They didn't want to open themselves up. So, they would do that in the bin. What would they also do? I think I would be great for this one. Great, you've applied for the job. You're not going to apply for a job again. I don't think this role is, it is right for me. I, I, I don't think I'm going to be the right person. You're not. You're, you're, you're put in the job application. Of course you think you're good enough. But why are you wasting my time? Why do you think I'm not important enough to be... I think I'd be great for this role. I know that. I'm looking at your application. Looking at your CV. If you didn't think you'd be good enough, then you wouldn't be applying in the first place. It's a big nose. Big, big nose. So Tom, tell me about your characteristics of yourself. Well, I've got my own business. And I like to I like to speak, I like to coach businesses. And I really enjoy doing this. Been doing it a while, and what I enjoy is seeing people go from the left side timeline to become very successful. I get motivated by that. Have I named the characteristic there? No, I'm not gone. Oh, I'm hard working. Mm -hmm. Why has he got from that? He's going to be on time. He plans his own events. So actually, he plans things out an emotional person, like seeing success. 
to obviously you, you must show, show leadership as well. This is all from the story. Now what are you going to remember? You're going to remember people turn, turn to you and go, I'm hard working and dedicated and passionate. You're going to go, oh, Tom Walker, he does business, he does business coaching, he puts this on, on his own events. Which one are you going to remember? I know I certainly remember Tom Walker, the business coach, because we relate to them stories. Now, let's be honest, we look at some films, obviously we've got different tastes of films. Now, let's go back to when we were kids. When we were kids, would you rather watch a fiction, something that had a great story, or would you watch a documentary? We like the story. We like the story. And we can relate to a story a lot more. And this is what I want to get through when we're going to interviews. You need to, just need to relax, be yourself, talk about yourself. And when they ask, okay, so is there anything to ask? Always, always, always ask. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Why? It shows you're interested. Shows you want to be in that role. You want to make that connection with somebody. And I'm sure Dan, one of our guest speakers later, will pick this up. So I'll move on to my next point. So how do we make that connection with a person? We've got four personality types. P A S E. Pace. Spelt wrong, admittedly, we take out the C for an S. Why does this matter? Because the majority of us fits into one of these categories. Are we a practical person? Do we like to be on time? Do we like to plan our events? Are we someone that likes to, likes to, to plan? If we go, oh, can, can, you, can you put this wardrobe together for me? You read the manual, plan it out, lay it out, make sure you've got all the pieces together, and you put it together. An action oriented person. I like taking actions, working with their hands. So I go back to that wardrobe. Can you put this wardrobe together? Bam bam. Yeah, no problem. Doesn't matter about the manual. Let's put this let, let let's put this up. Now, they get 75% of the way. Realise they don't have the parts. They didn't do any planning. But what I have done is I put three quarters of the wardrobe. They've taken action. Social people. What are these? They like to be in a group. They thrive in a group environment. And why does this matter? Are these people shy? No, they don't have to be. They can be quiet. They can sit there from the back of the room. Just thrive being in that environment. It's something they get a kick and are motivated by. We've got a fourth one emotional. And we take through actions through emotion and heartache, rejection. And I say this you know you're an emotional person if you're selling something, you get rejected. It takes you, or you're asking a girl out, you're asking a guy out, it doesn't matter. You get rejected. How many days does it take? Bounce back. For an emotional person, it takes them three to four days to bounce back. So, what I want to do now is got pens at all, pens and paper. going to do is we're going to make sure we're going to find out what personality types we have in the room today. So we're going to score certain things out certain. So 
out of certainty, mark this out of 50. So, who likes to have a plan and stick by this plan? They have a schedule, and that schedule is what they stick by. So if someone comes to them and goes, Tom, do you want to go out tonight? No, not at all, it's not on my schedule. No, no, we've got a schedule. Find me in advance, maybe next week. So they can put in their schedule. What I want you to do now is score your certainty out of 50. How do you like to be certain of things? Certain to have a plan in mind. Yes, one being, one being less certain to being 50, 50 being the most. Most? Most certain, let's say that. Next characteristic, characteristic. uncertainty. It's people like, uh, quite spontaneous. So, do you have anything planned? No, not really. Take every day by day. And these people are happily just jump on a plane and go to a random country. How many people are us like uncertainty? We score this out of 40. So we'll come on to the next one. Significance. How much you're relied upon. This is different to love. This is how much you are relied upon. So in work, as a manager, in whatever role you are, how much you are relied upon. If we score this out of 55. And finally, for the last one, we've got love. So, this is like a family. You get honest opinions back because people care. How much do we like this? How much do we like love? We like people saying what? What hurts, or what I think is better, we do it out of love. So we'd like to score this one out of 35. You all done that? Super. So, going back to the one before, it all adds up to 180. 180 is what adds up to all together. Why does this matter? We'll go back. So, who's happy to share? To share the figures with us. Okay, who's happy? So, I have to go back to the next slide and I'll, I'll look at them. Certainty. Like to plan and have a schedule. Tom, out of 15, what did you score it? Um, I scored 130. No, but uh, out of 50 for certain. Oh, sorry, uh, 25. 25. So for you, it, it's a little bit important, but... It's halfway, it's halfway. yeah. I like yeah. to be spontaneous, but however, some things I do like yeah. plan, so I thought halfway would reflect that. Super. So, uncertainty. Yeah, I... Spontaneous. 20 again, so it's 20. the same, same so thing. halfway again. Significant. How much you are relied upon? I feel very relied upon. What did you score? score 50. I left 50. 5 just simply because I know that I've got a little bit of freedom at the end of the day. And love? Um, family's oh, really important to me. My family uh, opinion of me and my work is hugely important, so I, I put myself at 35. Yeah. Superb. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to back. So. Tom was halfway. Tom was halfway in practical. He was halfway in certainty. How certainty relates to the practical person? Does this mean at halfway? Is this probably what Tom is? Probably not at all. Action. Again, people that I like to be spontaneous, take action. Tom was halfway. He's probably, probably majority action. No. Social. Now, 
this is something he would he had a quite high percentage for. We then five months off. He didn't max this out. He maxed out love. Now, what does this mean? To me, this means he's probably Tom is quite an emotional person. So he likes to take action through his emotions and hates rejection. So for me to make a connection with Tom, I'd tell stories because he will relate to stories. And if I was selling something today, if I turned around to Tom and went, buy this Tom, he wouldn't like that. If I told him the story of what happened, of my situation, how he is today, tell him about the feelings I had, the hardships I went through to today, it's more than likely Tom will buy. Of course, we've connected. And we all connect on a personal level. We connect to our personality types. So a practical person would relate to a practical person. Action to an action, social to a social, and emotional to an emotional person. Okay? So, practical person. Where do you find these? Normally in managers' jobs. Why? Because I like to plan. Are they the most charismatic people in the world? No, not at all. If anything, they're quite boring. Quite boring, quite dull. Because they like to have a plan, they like to have a schedule. These are practical people. So if I was selling to them, I'd want a plan. They'd want to see my plan. They wouldn't take action without seeing the figures. They would want to see the facts behind it. They wouldn't care about the story. They wouldn't care about the hardship. They care about the figures, facts and figures. Action person. Again, like taking action, like working with the hands. Now, if I spent an hour and a half pitching to them on sales about my story, my hardships, what they do? Chances are they get quite fidgety. Throw their hands a little bit. Why? Because they want to take action. These are the type of people which, are, which you can turn to and make. You can make a lot of money out of this. Take action today. And they would. They would. So that's what they prefer. Social people like to be in a group environment. Now, these type of people. If you put them in an environment where they felt comfortable, friendly, and went, I'm not being in this environment. I'm not being in a business, in a network like this. They'll take action. And again, we spoke about emotional. It's about creating the stories. And this relates, you go back to an interview skill. Now, this helps in sales. This will also help in sales. Sorry, in, in, in interviews. Why? I've had an interview before. You can work this out. How do you work this out? Just eliminate what you've got in front of you. If you've got no feedback from you to tell the story, probably not no emotional. If it's not really want to take action, plan it out, plan the meeting time, on time in a suit, dressed up. It's probably not action oriented. So I can cross out. Now, this is someone that's probably, who's, who's approached me in the group, took me into a group environment. Can you see how that is? And you can see that it's gone from being quite shy, to suddenly really high thought, really emotional. No, it's probably not social. So the chances are, in an interview, you're probably talking to a practical person. Why, why does it matter? You talk about facts and things. You can show them stats. You can relate to them in that way. They like to schedule them. So if you turn up to a practical person and went, oh, one day will work. Now, we're, we're arranging a meeting for Monday. Now, if you message a practical person, 
say you're meeting at 9 o'clock. If you message them at half 8, go, oh, actually, I can't do 9 o'clock, can we do later on? And I tell you now, the chances are that sale is gone. Why? Stay plan for 9 a.m. What do they feel now? Their schedule's out of sync. Are they used to that? No. That's not what they want. Like the schedule, they like to have a plan. They plan for 9 a.m., they probably plan what they've got in the, in the evening, what they've got in the afternoon. What are they going to do after the meeting? You're going to move that all out. Are you going to make that sale? Chances are not. Again, I'm just going back to that point. Certainty, practical person. Uncertainty, action, significant, social, love, emotion. Let me tell you a secret we'll all forget. There's four personality types, which we all are. Now, we're all a practical action, social, emotional person, but we can take this deeper. Now, it's four types, and I would say we can eliminate the last one, because only 5% of the world are in this type, so it's three types, which we all are. Either an anxious person, you need to be told, you're doing a good job, keep up, they like reviews, they like having reviews, they like to be told, yes, you're doing a really good job. And if this person, if an anxious person is in a relationship, they'll cuddle, hold hands a lot more. They like being quite needy, quite being in that comfort zone. Okay? So that's an anxious person. A secure person. It's very self confident. But let's say an emergency is going on around them. They wouldn't panic. Their brain will work normally. And they'll think, actually, the exit's over there. Everyone's going to run to that exit. The one furthest away is probably my best chance of getting out. This is what secure people do. The next point, avoided. These are people that like to be secluded. They like to be on their own. They'll bottle up their opinions. Keep them to yourself. And then the last 5%, it's a combination of action or avoidance. And how do you work this out? Go back to your first day of school. Were you someone to cry? Cry because my mum left? If you were, I'm quite anxious. If you just went, you didn't even notice, your mum just disappeared and you were happy getting on with your friends. Probably quite secure. If you're one that went, this is occurring, I'm not really keen on this, I'm going to keep myself to myself. Probably avoid it. How does this relate? All three types. We're all three types. And it's going back to the practical action, social and emotional. We can relate that to them. You know, someone's action, anxious. Now we can go to them every day and say, actually, you're doing a really good job. Keep going. They'll get a boost from that. They'll get such a boost. Now, if you did that to an avoidant person, they'll probably panic. They'll panic and think, ooh, this is watching me, I don't, I don't like this. An avoidant person, I'm happy just to be on the road, just to let them be. And this is what point you need to pick up. So, when we're choosing that perception, that image, who we want to be. We need to take everything in. We need to think, what am I? What am I? Who am I? Now, I'm an emotional person. So I'm going to connect automatically with the emotion. Now, if I'm building them connections, I'm going to tell my story. Because that's who I am. People learn more from me telling my story than going, oh, these are the facts and figures. Because chances are, you're not good at the facts and figures, you're good at your story. And I hope you've all learned something today. So for now, we're just going to take a 15 minute break.
and we'll get to come back in the room and we've got one of our guest speakers speaking who stand and I'll introduce him before. So, so now, I'll see you in 15 minutes.